Our final cost variances are our fixed overhead variances. Now, our pro formas of what we need to consider in relation to our fixed overhead variances will be slightly different to what we've seen in relation to all of our variable cost variances. The first two fixed overhead variances we are going to consider are our volume variance and our expenditure variance. Our fixed overhead volume variance is looking at did we produce more or less units than expected, which would result in us absorbing more or less fixed overheads. Our expenditure variance is looking at, as you would expect, were our fixed overhead costs more or less than we had originally planned. So we'll begin by looking at our pro forma for each of these two variances. So to calculate our fixed overhead volume variance, as always, we begin by looking at our standard hours at the standard rate. Where now our standard rate is going to be our standard fixed overhead charge per labour hour. Now we're going to compare this to our budgeted hours valued at the standard rate. Our budgeted hours meaning the total number of labour hours we expected to work throughout the course of the period when we did our original standards and budgeting. When we compare these two we will get our volume variance. Our second variance then is our expenditure variance where we compare our budgeted hours at the standard rate with our actual hours at the actual rate. Now if we think about what two figures are we comparing here? Well our budgeted hours from the start of the period valued at our standard rate is just our total budgeted fixed cost. Whereas our actual hours at the actual rate is our total actual fixed overhead. Remember, we don't expect our fixed overhead costs to change in relation to our level of activity. So when we're looking at the fixed overhead expenditure variance, we are simply comparing our total budgeted fixed overheads to our total actual fixed overhead cost. Okay, so let's have a look at an example to calculate these two variances. So we have our standard and budgeted cost. Our standard fixed cost is £7 per labour hour and we expect each unit to take two hours. Our budgeted number of units is 1,000, so our budgeted fixed overheads total at the start of the period is £14,000. Then we're given our actual results. So our production units, our actual hours worked, and our actual fixed overhead cost. So let's put these figures into our pro forma to see what we get. So calculating our volume variance, first of all, we look at our actual units produced, 1,300. Expect each unit to take two hours. So that's our standard hours. Multiply by our standard rate, which is now our standard fixed overhead rate per labour hour, of £7. When you work that through, you should get 
18,200. And we're comparing this to our budgeted hours at the standard rate, which is just our budgeted total fixed overheads. We were given in the question our total of 14,000. So to calculate then our volume variance, just our top figure minus the bottom figure, so we have 18,200 minus 14,000 gives us a positive figure of 4,200. So our volume variance is 4,200 favourable. And why is this? Well, let's consider our budgeted total fixed overhead cost. Our budgeted total fixed overhead cost will be equal to our budgeted production units multiplied by our standard labour hours per unit multiplied by our standard rate. So if we consider those components, we're told in the question that our budgeted production was a thousand units. We expected each unit to take two hours at a budgeted fixed overhead cost per hour of seven pounds. If you work that through, you'll get back to our £14,000. So what is it we are comparing when we look at the volume variance? What has created this variance? Well, the thing that's different in our calculations is the number of units we are looking at. So what we are comparing here is our actual production units to our budgeted production units. And we can see that we have actually produced more units than we had planned to at the start of the period, which is why we have this favourable volume variance. So that's our volume variance complete. Calcul calculate our expenditure variance. So here we're just comparing our total budgeted fixed overhead to our actual fixed overhead cost. We're told in the question that our actual fixed overheads were 14,600. So to calculate our expenditure variance, top figure minus bottom, so 14,000 minus 14,600 gives us a negative figure of 600 pounds. So we have an adverse variance. Clearly, we can see that our fixed overhead expenditure was more than we originally planned, which is why we then have this adverse variance. Finally then, calculating our total fixed overhead variance, we had our favourable volume variance of 4,200, minus our adverse expenditure variance of 600. So overall, we had a favourable variance of £3,600. OK. The next thing we need to consider is our volume variance in a little bit more detail. Our volume variance for our fixed overheads can be broken down into two sub-variances, if you like. So we could work this question through again, except this time we're breaking up our volume variance into two other separate variances. Again, we will have a pro forma for this calculation. The only difference is going to be that the pro forma will be a little bit longer. So, as we see, our volume variance can be broken out into our efficiency variance and our capacity variance. Now, our fixed overhead efficiency variance is the very same approach 
as our labour efficiency variance and our variable overhead efficiency variance. The only difference will be that the standard rate we now use is our standard fixed overhead charge per labour hour. When we calculate our capacity variance, what we are looking at here is, that, is whether or not the company had more or less labour hours available to it throughout the course of the period. So at the start of the period, perhaps we would plan to have 2,000 labour hours worked throughout the course of the year. When we're looking at our capacity variance, we are considering, as a company, did we have more or less labour hours available to us? We're going to work this through using the same information as the previous question. And when we get to the end, we will see that our volume variance is the sum of our efficiency variance plus our capacity variance. So our standard hours at the standard rate we already calculated. We've produced 1,300 units. We expect each unit to take two hours and our standard rate is seven pounds. So when we work this through, we got 18,200. Now we're comparing this to our actual hours at the standard rate. So our actual hours worked were 2,850 at a standard rate of seven pounds. You work that through, you should get 19,950. So to calculate our efficiency variance, we have 18,200 minus 19,950 gives us minus 1,750. It is a negative figure, so it is an adverse variance. And we know the reason why we would have an adverse efficiency variance is because it has taken more hours than expected to produce our 1,300 units. Moving on then to our capacity variance. To calculate our capacity variance, we are looking at the actual hours worked, valued at the standard rate, and comparing this to the budgeted um, total number of labour hours we thought we would have available. Our budgeted labour hours will be our budgeted production units multiplied by our standard hours per unit. So we know our budgeted production was a thousand units and we expected each unit to take two hours. And we value that at our standard rate. So at the start of the year, when we were looking at the resource available to the company in terms of labour hours, we thought we would have 2,000 labour hours available in total. When we work that calculation through, we get our 14,000. So our capacity variance then, 19,950 minus 14,000 gives us a positive figure of 5,950 favourable. So why do we have a favourable capacity variance? Well, at the start of the year, we thought we would have 2,000 labour hours available in our manufacturing department. However, by the end of the year, it is clear that we actually had more resource available than we thought. So we actually had 2,850 labour hours worked resulting then in our favourable capacity variance. Finally then, if we're using this pro forma to calculate all of our fixed overhead variances, our last step would be to calculate our expenditure variance, 
which we know is just comparing our total budgeted fixed overheads to our actual fixed overheads. So our expenditure variance will just be, as we worked out before, £600 adverse. So, I said to you at the start of calculating our fixed overhead variances in this way, that our volume variance would be equal to the sum of our efficiency variance and our capacity variance. So let's have a quick look to see if that is true. Our volume variance then, using this way to calculate it, be our efficiency plus our capacity variance. Our efficiency variance was adverse, so it was minus 1,750, plus our favourable capacity variance of 5,950, giving us a total favourable variance then of £4,200, which ties back to the figure we got when we calculated the volume variance directly.